Yeah, a colleague of mine years ago um, got emphysema from being exposed to ozone. He's working in a lab with some high voltage equipment and he really got quite poorly and then some time off work, recovered, came back, carried on with the project. And until someone commented, well, mate, it's your ozone, isn't it? Some, somebody who knew what they're talking about. And uh, sure enough, it was the ozone being generated by the high voltage equipment. It wasn't particularly pungent, but you could smell it. And it's similar to the smell that you get next to a photocopier. So um, I, was, I bought this maybe two years ago, and I've only just this minute taken it out of the box because of the current situation with uh, room sterilization and the worries over uh, the coronavirus. And it's just basically a lot of time in here. And I saw one on another channel that had a special uh, filament bulb, which is um, it's basically a standard filament AC bulb but with low pressure uh, mercury vapor in it. And when you fire the bulb up, you get um, a discharge uh, conduction between the filaments uh, via the mercury vapor, and it produces uh, so low pressure bulb, so 254 uh, nanometers and thereabouts. There's a whole range of, uh, of wavelengths, but the low pressure uh, <coughs> mercury vapor bulb gives you um, UVA, I think it is. We'll look at the spectrum in a minute so here it is and um it's very simple i've taken the screws off you just got a fan on the back and a filter and in the instruction book there is a picture of ozone how ozone works which is all very interesting oh there we are zoom in a little bit there you go so an o2 gets hit by a, a photon oxidizes one, breaks down another O2 and you end up with two O3s from three O2s. So, and it's very, very oxidizing uh, because there's an ordinary oxygen atom on its own is very, very reactive um, because it has one spare electron in its outer shell, atomic number 16, and these two are sharing their outer electrons. And you imagine it's a bit simplistic. It's not like that at all, but they're sharing their outer electrons and they're happier together so they stick together because they've got covalent bonds using their electrons but generally still quite reactive as you can see when you start your car or when you burn a piece of paper it's all there ready to react but it's just not so aggressive as a single oxygen atom or an O3 molecule so it's highly oxidizing that's the process of forcing an electron onto another molecule or, or atom uh, to to oxidize it and you can see you can, you, it says here about taking a walk after a thunderstorm where you can get clean fresh air is down to ozone I don't know if that's really true or not but um, there's some things about ozone and the thing that's worrying me was that um, having had a colleague that was pretty ill with it and then we have in the UK we have there's no real safety uh, you know, if you get damaged by one of these cheap Chinese products, and most of them come from China, then you've got nothing to stand on because you can find, you can try and sue the importer, but you can guarantee the importer is not covered. Uh, or most of the people selling these boxes they buy don't have proper liability insurance for product liability insurance. And in fact, it's actually quite difficult because I'm a manufacturer to get proper product liability uh, insurance for underwriting risks to your customers in the UK. Usually the buck stops as far as recovering costs from an insurance claim in the UK. So they price it on the basis that if you're selling these kinds of products, you probably won't be able to get insured. And if you can, then you'll pay a high premium because they will never really be successful in, in uh, prosecuting the manufacturer. So there's electrical safety information. <laughs> and there's uh, the operating times for different areas. Notice in American uh, square feet, so small room, seven minutes, up to a large room, 1,000 square feet, or a corridor, 100 by 10 feet, is on all the time, so keep it on. So not much safety information at all, if any at all, really. And then, actual on the unit itself, it says, use in unoccupied space only. So it doesn't. there's nothing about waiting for the ozone to decay. The ozone decays to about half the concentration, about half an hour, I think it is. We'll look at that in a minute. And so... Yeah, the, you're supposed to leave the room empty for 10 hours or something after it's been flooded with ozone. And of course, the idea is, the whole reason for this uh, 
technology is to sterilize the room so if we just look at this I've taken the screws out already and inside we haven't got much really we've got a high voltage transformer a neon type transformer and you can see it's a 220 volt one you can see it's 220 Her Majesty's volts are required in fact my house is 240 245 most of the time and at night it goes up to 250 because of I'm right next to the substation and then the poles go off down the road to supply the people that are fed by overhead cables so it's bumped up and I know I'm on the highest tap because the electricity board man that was at the substation told me when I asked him. So I get 245 in my house which is not ideal so I'm going to be generating voltages 10% over so this will produce more ozone than someone else's and of course you get the reliability issues associated with having higher mains voltages everything is stressed more especially this because it'll be pumping out 20 or 30 kV and because of the actual higher mains voltage it'll be 33 or 23 22 23 kV okay so mains plug filter and then here we've got the um, natural ozone generator and what it is is a the back is just a plain ceramic it's actually made of a piece of ceramic I'll zoom in so you can see it a bit better there you go something to point with a pointy thing would be good non-conductive pointy thing yeah so it's um probably got tin oxide layer or some other conductive layer on the back of this ceramic plate one contact contacts onto this back plane if you like a conductive plane now on the front you've got this basically pcb printed circuit type um, copper fingers and when it's uh, switched on it's an ac signal being applied to this the uh, the air because of the electric field around the edges of these fingers you'll get a coronal breakdown over the surface and you'll see it as probably glow I don't know if we can see anything we'll try it and then the fan blows the ozone is created in the electric field in the in the coronal uh, breakdown area and then the ozone is blown away using the fan out through the front grill and then it's all controlled by this uh, microwave style timer and so on it's a straightforward electromechanical timer so not much in there um, when I bought this it was two years ago it was about 28 quid and now I see they've gone up to 80 pounds on the on Amazon we'll look at that in a minute so that's the unit um, we'll run it at the end I'll darken the room and you can have a look at the coronal discharge but I did give it a quick blip you know literally 10 seconds and it stinks it really does give you that really strong ozone smell that sometimes you can sniff around the photocopier all right so that's the product and so let's go on to the computer and then we'll just we'll sort of i've been thinking about this and i'll just give you my thoughts on what i found out on the internet with regard to what might be useful for you to know about ozone and precautions to take when you're using one of these because there's virtually no safety advice and the emphysema isn't something that you could be mildly suffering from emphysema and you wouldn't know and it's the sort of thing that just overtakes you when it gets to a point where there's so much fluid being generated in your lungs you start to drown in your own fluids and at that point you'll have breathing difficulty so it's on a spectrum of uh, you know down to a, a bad exposure will hospitalize you pretty much straight away whereas a long-winded uh, long-term low exposure will have um, bad effects on your health according to all the, uh, the studies that have been done. So let's switch to the computer and have a look at that and then we'll run this up at the end and you can have a look at the uh, beautiful blue glow. Ah, you're ready for a tour of the Wild West, otherwise known as the Internet. Look at this, antioxidant. It's the strongest oxidant you can get just about, apart from going things like sulfuric acid, so it's definitely not antioxidant. All the other things, pain reliever, tissue regeneration, and anti-inflammatory, it's actually a very strong inflammatory agent. Germicide, well that's right and uh, immune system cyst stimulant definitely not so yeah a whole bundle of claims from an american website about the uh, therapy therapeutic benefits of ozone and here's another site uh, talking about breathing ozone very bad idea saline drips direct injections and auto hemotherapy whatever that is something invented to con money out of people and then here's from the um, American Lung Association about the long-term risks that just are being discovered about long-term exposure to low levels of ozone and the, how bad ozone is as pollutant. So use this equipment carefully. Okay, so we're on the desktop now. So let's have a look at the uh, ozone health effects. This is from the uh, American FDA 
uh, which seems to have the most comprehensive standards. They've obviously looked at this before. And you can see uh, the risk. Okay, and here it says the Food and Drug Administration requires the ozone output of indoor medical devices be no more than 0 0.05 parts per million, which is pretty low, 0 0.05, okay. Uh, you can aggravate asthma. Um, you're not allowed to be exposed to more than 0 0.10 parts per million for eight hours, so it's it's potent stuff. I mean, you know, it's not to be messed with. Uh, throat irritation of costs, and it goes on. You can read this. You can scream, um, freeze frame, and look at this. But you can say it goes to check chest pain and uh, shortness of breath, inflammation and lung disease, and that comes on really quickly if you have a long, you know, an exposure even twenty minutes at the wrong concentrations, which can be produced by these units. I think then you could be in hospital with your lungs filling up with water. And you've got a higher susceptibility to respiratory infection. So if you're exposing yourself to uh, ozone, you're actually reducing your natural defenses in your lungs to fight off and to kill infection. So you might be killing the, the uh, ozone in your environment, but when you go out, you're more likely to get infected. So that's the first thing to bear in mind. So that's an interesting thing. There is um, stuff on the internet from companies which make um, sterilizers for... Uh, laboratories and so on and you can see this one you can see the E. coli have grown on this one and this has been treated for two hours with an ozone thing in the room so they had the same inoculation of these petri dishes one was in the uh, a room that wasn't being sterilized and the other one was in the target room for test and you can see it killed the E. coli which is a bacterium it's not a virus okay so how effective is it for viruses okay so now if we go to China is obsessed with um, ozone sterilization and I uh, evaluated one of those uh, a Chinese version of the room bar floor sweeper thing me Bob and it had an ozone um, UV sterilizer built in and it was just a 380 nanometers UV lead or near UV lead so it was nowhere near it wasn't ionizing wouldn't kill anything but it was all plastered all over the packaging it reminds me of um, uh, cosmetics you know these claims that it makes you look 10 years younger and removes wrinkles and lifts your cheeks and things like that. And of course, it's all bloody rubbish, really. It's just um, making people feel that they're doing what they should be doing to stay beautiful, or in this case, stay healthy. So here's a bit of a thing from the Chinese organization. So, and there's a bit specifically about killing uh, coronavirus, COVID-19. Uh, so it talks about the full coverage high detergency oxidizing bacteria and viruses how ozone works we know that there is no poisonous residue that's true as long as you go in the room up to five or six hours after it's been treated and then ventilate the room um, so they are determined that uh, this works for treating uh, coronaviruses and other viruses and you can see here there's something about um, claims of effectiveness in uh, ZARS to 99.22%, very specific, on how big the trial was. But um, it probably works if you have the right concentration, it's bound to because it, ozone is such a noxious oxidizing uh, chemical, uh, gas, and um, yeah, it's going to do the job, isn't it, probably, I think. And probably you don't breathe it and then reduce your own uh, immunity by damaging your lungs, okay? So, I mean, I just look at the um, usual claims, I and mean, this is a typical, I just cut and paste this off, off um, Amazon. Uh, powerful odor eliminator and deodorizer, uh, cost cut friendly, no safety issue at all, no safety uh, warnings at all, and in fact, these things are all CE approved, but there is no way, trust me, no way, that this, this one that we bought for testing is CE approved. It just isn't. It just can't be because it hasn't got adequate safety, hasn't got a health and safety data sheet reference to it so that you can actually look to see if you've been exposed, what to do. There's supposed to be links to a data sheet which you can request. It's the Wild West, boys. It might be CE marked, but it stands for China Export, not a certification for Europe. Okay, so that's the... Let's cover that bit. And then... Um, you can see these things are for sale all over the internet. The uh, ozone generator modules, which is very similar to the thing in there, except it's got two plates in. 
and they sell those and they say you can use it in your car imagine driving along in a confined space of a car with an ozone generator on and you leave it on for five minutes because you jump out to get a loaf of bread jump back in and you get a gut full of a lung full of ozone which then starts stripping away the linings of your your lungs and affecting it so not good here is i've looked through several proper medical devices which are manufactured for hospitals and laboratories you know where there might be a biohazard and then there's this one here look and you can see this is the typical level ppm so these things go up between 125 and 150 ppm is the sterilization cycle so we were talking about 0.01 ppm so the safety limit is down here below the bottom of this green line in terms of prolonged exposure in the home okay so yeah we are talking dangerous concentrations from a sterilization device i, mean, I think that's self-evident from what you can see on there it goes up to 150 160 ppm which is uh 15 times the uh 15 times the level when you sh we will get um symptoms if you expose yourself to it so you're gonna have to be if you do own one of these things and you decide to use it know the risks and take precautions so that's that now there's the the guidelines for 03 in the workplace so between 0.2 ppm for more than two hours no more than two hours 0.1 ppm for eight hours 0.08 ppm for eight hours per day doing moderate work because you know when you're doing work you're breathing heavier so you're ingesting more ozone into your lungs and then 0.05 ppm for eight hours a day exposure doing heavy work so you can see the levels produced by these boxes which are all over the internet is vastly greater than is safe to expose yourself to and there's a thing here I looked at some um, semiconductor detectors you can have an ozone detector which just shines a UV light down a tube of air and because ozone is created by it's highly um, absorbing of the uh, 265 nanometer line in the UV spectrum uh, and that's basically what's happening in, in the upper atmosphere is that the gas or the air will transmit or the ozone in the air will block and um, attenuate the UV so you you sign a UV uh, light down the tube of air then when you suck it, uh, ozonated air through you get a reduction in the light at the other end and you measure that with a sensor but there are semiconductor gas sensors this Henan Hanway Electronics Co makes this one which is about the only one I could find not very accurate but it uses a tin oxide tube heated and um, when ozone is present the conductivity of that the inside of that tube decreases in response to ozone so that's how it works so there's various sensors uh, but the, the problem is going to be with this is calibrating it it's not a calibrated device so you have to do a calibration so to do a calibration you have to know the concentration so you're gonna to have to use one of the expensive ozone detectors to give this a rough guide of where we are in terms of ppm so I considered building one and, and playing with it but I discounted it because just wasn't enough electronic sensors I might have a go at the uh, the tube version the glass tube uh, source and sensor at the other end of the tube and a fan but um, that might be for another day all right so if, if we just um if you go into amazon and there you can see there's a search on amazon and uh turning up hundreds of these ozone generators for sale in the uk so they're widely available and I, i'm guessing they've all got the similar safety issues so let's go back to the unit and uh, try it out and see if we can see any discharge or anything exciting happening on that. Okay, so there's a picture live scan of the actual ozone generator part and I'm just going to turn it on for a second and you can see what it does. Ready? Hold my breath. <gasps> and there you can see it. It's the little imperfections where the uh, copper has been etched away of um, arcing from little sharp little jagged parts when I turn the lights on you'll see what I mean about the jagged parts but that's the item quite a nice stink Whew. I'd better go out the room but I'll just turn this on so you can have a look and that's what we look at you can see the tiny imperfections in the, in the etching around here and that's what the, where the arc is coming from so that's it um, that's how it works it really smells it's quite strong I'm going to leave the room